Hello viewers, we are going to be taking you through this story for a level pure and applied mathematics. And this video, we're going to go through the math guide for senior 5, end of term 1 for the year 2024. So this video is still for students in both senior 5 and senior 6 offering principal mathematics as part of their combination. So we have called it pure and applied because this term for this particular school, the coverage was not so big to separate the two papers, paper 1 and paper 2. Otherwise, there are two papers, math paper 1, which is pure, and math paper 2, which is applied. But for the sake of this school, we combined both papers. So before we progress, I would like to first of all welcome you to a level and accomplishing the first term, your first term in advanced levels. So how was it? How how were the challenges and how did you cope up with them? You can give your comments in the comment section below. Otherwise, a level requires a set of books which you need to buy. So there is math paper one, math paper two. Topical Question Bank and Timely Pass All these ones, all these books are needed if you are doing principal mathematics. This contains all the notes for Math Paper 1. This contains all the notes for Math Paper 2. This contains all unique questions from the year 2023 up to 1988. That is over 33 years. But the good thing with this book is that questions are arranged topic by topic with final answers in brackets so it is a good book for revision the reason why it is topical is that so every each topic a teacher finishes you should also have finished those questions in the neb question bank so that by the time a teacher says that i have finished the syllabus you are also confident that you have attempted all the questions in the neb question bank from the year 2023 to 1988. Then this fourth book, like the name suggests, Termly Past Papers. So the tape papers you do in your beginning of term, mid-term, end of term, mocks and UNEB Past Papers with their complete marking guides and allocation of marks. So this is also vital. Actually, you will realize that the questions which are in this video we shall, we shall share, most of them are in this book. Why? Because it is just a change of language, but the concepts will remain the same. So now that you're in Senior 5, you need to understand how solutions are presented in an examination. There is a lot of sensitivity which somehow differs from the one of all level. So you really need this book to know how solutions are presented and also the marking points. So we release this book every year. So this is the release of 2024, meaning that it has papers for the year 2023. So those who will be in Senior 5 next year, we'll, we shall have a release of 2025, which will have papers of 2024. That's how this book is done. So it is updated every year. For those who do subsidiary mathematics, all the notes and timely passers and Genève passers are in one book, and this is the only book you need to buy. For physics, like I said, for math, also physics, there are four books. There is physics paper one, containing all the notes of physics paper one. Physics Paper 2 containing all the notes of Physics Paper 2. Then Topical Question Bank from 2023 up to 1992. Questions are arranged topically and with their final answers in brackets. Then this one contains the complete solutions for this question bank. So, you, so for this year, we don't have timely A-level physics. But next year it will be there because they are uh, we have begun compiling passers for this year. So next year there'll be also a timely passer for a level of physics. 
So you really need all these books for you to progress well in your A level. And like the saying goes, the earlier, the better. Otherwise, I welcome you to this platform because the platform for victors, I think you can also try to see by yourself by scrolling through the videos of the previ previously uploaded and the comments there. You see the testimonies of those who went through this platform and have achieved their success. And we also believe that you will also achieve their success if you persist in watching these videos. So now before we proceed, I want to show you how you can easily navigate through this platform, Rower eLearning platform. So when you are connected to Wi-Fi or internet hotspot, you can easily search our platform, navigate through our platform. I think you see I've pressed YouTube. So even when you're having a smartphone, you'll need to look for that icon of YouTube. If you don't have the app there, you have to install YouTube. Then you can so that you can easily use it. So from there, you can search now for our platform, Roa eLearning. You can even stop there by let's complete the word eLearning platform. You search. When you search, it will bring this picture. So it is this where you press. You can see the word is here. So you press here, but you can also subscribe here. So you press here. And now there are these parts. There's home, videos, playlist, community. So if you press videos, it is not... These videos are... Remember, there are different videos because we upload videos of all level and A level and for math and physics. So if you just use videos, it may not be well arranged. Playlist is like... In your ICT, you covered what we call folders where files are kept. Now here, a playlist is like a folder where videos are kept. But my, so these are different folders, but still they are in a disorganized way because there is, you can see here, for example, math contest, math contest. Then you go to physics, you go to health participants. So they are not well organized, but if you go to home, in home, we organize now the folders. So here videos were just videos. Here folders, then in home is where the folders are well organized. And that's why you see the word created playlist. For example, A level math, it means that all these ones are the folders for A level mathematics and specifically applied mathematics. There are just a few, but you can even press here to keep scrolling, or you press here to view all. Then from there, there is all level math. It, but for now, for you, you are not in all level, so you can just ignore this. Then you go to A level pure math. You can search. You also press view all. A level physics part two. The videos are there. Press here to view all. A level. Let me see. Yeah, subsidiary math for those who do subsidiary math. Physics paper one. Like that, past papers. So you also need this section for past papers. The national math contest. This is for all level. And like I told you, you have not yet uploaded for a level, but you will also be uploaded. So basically, that is how you can navigate through our platform. Always remember to go to home. So now that you are, that was a brief introduction on how you can navigate through our platform and now we can, we can now start our marking guide or solutions to the paper which was done in end of term. So there were two sections, section A and section B. So we shall start with section A and all questions were compulsory. So question one says, there is a value of x which makes the equation this one valid what is this value in other words this is another word for saying solve for x in all level you could say solve for x now it's like saying solve for x the first thing to realize is that the bases are different when the bases are different, before you add the logarithms, you have to first make the bases, everything on the same base. And it is advisable that you look for the smallest base. So here, we have base 3, base 9, and base 81. 
mean that we have to change all these bases to base 3. And that will be our first step. So the formula for change of base is also available in your mathematical logbook. So to change, this will become log base 3 of x over log base 3 of 9. But why is there 2? It is because 9 is 2 to 3 to power 2. So this power can go down. So applies to this, it is log base 3 of x over log base 3 of 81. But 81 is the same as 3 to power 4. So what we do this for can go down to the rule of logarithm. Now from there I realize that this is be, can become 1. So it becomes this over 2, this over 4, which is here. Okay, so I can add the logarithm because this is log base 3 of x, log base 3 of x, log base 3 of x. So 1 plus a half plus a quarter is 7 over 4, log base 3 of x. Then this one is here. Now from there, I have to eliminate logarithm. But if I eliminate, this should be positive 1. So what do I do? I can choose to cancel this. It is still OK. And also bring this on this side to, get, to become 21 over 7, which gives you 3, which is here. Then I can eliminate by saying this to power this is equal to this. So 3 to power 3 is equal to x. Now 3 to power 3 is the same as 27. And that's what they wanted. So this was the value of x which they were looking for. So Mark was therefore to change base. Also realizing that log base 3 of 3 is equal to 1 was also a mark. Simplifying, adding these ones was a mark. Eliminating logarithm was a mark and required output. So basically that's how the five marks would come about. Like I told you, here we are sensitive on how you present your solution. Then question two, solve the equation this for this range of values of theta. So I think you see the values are from negative 360 to positive 360, meaning that you are going to give two sets of values from negative 360 to 0 and also from 0 to positive 360. It's like a repetition, but that's why the question wanted. So I begin by quoting, writing that. Remember, I think we're aware that in your solution, you don't recopy the question. You just begin straight away. So the first thing to do is to write what was given, then you can start from there to proceed. So here the first thing to do is to express this in terms of tan. So 6 squared theta is same as 1 plus tan squared theta. Now these identities are available in your mathematical logbook, and I encourage you to go with them in your examinations. Then I can open brackets open brackets this to get that, then collect like terms, this with this gives you 5, this one comes this side to give you positive, this, okay, this comes this side to give you negative 8. So that is a quadratic in tan theta, meaning I can use bulldozer method to get the value of tan theta. So there are two ways of solving quadratic equations, but when it comes to trigonometry, it is advisable to use this quadratic formula because most of the values of tan theta will be in decimals. So in, so in this case it was easy because even if you sub-factorize I think you realize these are perfect decimals so you could also factorize to get the answer. But some cases it is not possible so it is better you just straight away use the quadratic formula which works for both settings so there are two values of tan theta but they want values of theta so i have to come and say that for this value of theta tan tan is positive in the first and third quadrants so how do i get these values let us begin with positive values 
I'll get my catch rate and press actan 0.8. I'll be able to get this value. So that is value is what goes here and here. You realize that I'm putting those values on the horizontal line. Then from there, I'll begin to generate other values. So the first value, first quadrant angle is from your tier, which is this. Mm -hmm. Then from, from here up to here is the second positive angle, which is 180 plus 38.66 to give you this. Now, positive and negative angles, how different are they? Positive angles begin from this horizontal line and move in anti-clockwise direction. Mm -hmm. Negative angles move start from this very point, but instead move in the clockwise direction. Okay, now you have seen how to get the positive angles. What about the negative? You are going to start from here and move up to here. That is negative of 180 minus 36.66. So you put, okay, how do you write it? You put a negative outside because negative because you're moving in an clockwise direction. Then in brackets, you put 180 minus 36.66. You'll be able to get this one. Okay. Then the other one is also from here and you move all the way up to here. So still you do the same, negative in brackets, 360 minus 36.8.66, which is here. So basically that's how all the four would be generated. We are going to use the same procedure for negative angles. So still tan is negative in the second and fourth quadrant. Let's begin with the positives. I'll get my calculator and press actan 2. I want you to know the difference. Here there is negative 2. But on the calculator, I will press actan 2, which is a positive. Okay, the magnitude of that. So let me get the calculator and you see how to do with it. So if I get the calculator and I press actan 2, actan 2, I'll get 63.5. Four, three. So in trigonometry, the angles we use to decimal places, so round off. So that is 63.43. So how do I generate these angles? Because how do I generate these angles? One, the 63.43 is what you put here and here. It should lie on the horizontal line. Then we begin. Let's begin with the positive angles. From here, go up to here. That will be 180 minus 64.43, which is this. Okay. The second positive one is from here up to here. That is 360 minus 63.43, which is this. Okay. Now we shall go to negative angles. From here up to here. That is negative 63.43, which is here. Then from here all the way up to here. That will be negative. Then in brackets, you are going to put there 180 plus 63.43. You will come up with this. And that's how they get the angles. And that's why, that's why they want it. So there was a mark for identifying this identity. A mark for getting this quadratic. Rearrange to get a quadratic. A mark for solving. Either use factorization or quadratic formula. A mark for stating all these four correct all should be correct even these ones all should be correct and that's how the five marks would come about then question three was coming from sads it says express this as equivalent fraction of with a rational denominator So like we did in all level, you have to rationalize. But the funny thing is that here now there are three sides. So what you do, you are going to first pair two of them. So if I pair these ones, as you see in the bracket, I'll have now, I'll take it as one. This minus root five. 
So to rationalize that it means I'm going to multiply up and down with this plus root 5. So this sign is this sign is on changing. It was negative, now it is plus here and also plus there. Then from there we shall expand. Expand this 2 with this gives you this 2. This root 2 with this gives you this. And this root 2 with this gives you this. Then for the denominator, it is a difference of two squares. So it becomes this squared minus this squared. Then we expand again this one because we have to open this bracket. So that becomes this. So this squared is here. This squared is here. Then twice the product of these two is here. Minus this squared gives you 5. Then you simplify. The numerator for which you can't simplify further, but the denominator you can. So I'm going to collect like terms. This plus this is 5. 5 minus 5 is 0. So I remain with only 2 root 6. Okay, there is still a third in the denominator, but they want you to get a rational denominator. So I have to still multiply up and down by root 6. When I apply this with this, I'll come up with this. This with this, I'll come up with this. And this with this, I'll come up with this. This with this is 6 times 2 to give you 12. Then you simplify. This 60 is the same as 4 times 15. So the root 4 is 2, that's why you see a 2 here. Meaning that I can now divide throughout by 2, up and down. So this by 2 is 1, by 2 is 3, that's why you see 3 here. By 2 is 1, that's why you see 1 here. By 2 here it is 6, that's why you see a 6 there. So you cannot simplify further, therefore you stop at that point. So the first mark was to rationalize. Then you expand both numerator and denominator. Then also multiply by innocent expression or what you call rationalize. Then this one was for expanding. Expanding this. And simplified output. Simplifying to get an output. Question 4. Question 4 came from roots of quadratic equations and says if alpha and beta are roots of the, of the quadratic equation this find the values of alpha minus beta then alpha cubed plus beta cubed let's start with roman one for roman one that's the equation we have meaning that sum of roots will be negative of this divided by this to give you 3.5 Product of roots will be this divided by this to give you 2. Therefore, they want alpha minus beta. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to first expand it. Expanding this gives you this. I think by now you are aware of that, come that with that identity. Therefore, without a power, it, you have to put a square root. So I can now sim, substitute sum of roots is this, product of roots is that. And this 4 is here. So I'll come up with this. And that will be the answer. That's Roman 1. Roman 2, it was about tubed. So still, you should be called that with this identity or algebraic expression. So we shall substitute sum of roots, product of roots, sum of roots to give you this output. And basically, that is what they wanted. So one mark for both sum and product, here substitution, output, substitution, output, and that's how the five marks would come about. Question five says, find the value of x for which this is equal to this and verify your answer. So each time you see questions of this form, you need to verify the answer for you to be on a safer side. Because you will do your computation very well and you'll get two values, but somehow one of the values may not be 
may not verify may, may not pro may not be consistent consistent with what we with the expression given so we shall begin by cutting it then we shall square both sides when i square i'll come up with this this squared is that this squared is this then trace the product is that this one squaring it will just remove the square root then from there you have to still make this square put the square root on one side and the rest on the other side so when i do that i'll come up with this so how for example 2x plus x is 3x but bring this on this side this is 3x minus x to give you 2x okay this is negative 3 it comes this side to give you 1 plus 3 which is 4 then here the resist 2 is here then this one expand it to get 2x squared plus x then i'm going to square both sides this one is somewhat different from this why because 2 was common so when i when i factorize out 2 here i'll get x plus 2 so this the 2 factorized out goes with that then i square i'll come up with this Collect like terms to get a quadratic and then solve the quadratic. So here I was able to use factorization, but even if you use quadratic formula, it is still okay. So I come up with two values, but those values, like I said, they want you to verify your answer. You have to find out, do all these values satisfy this equation given or one of them doesn't? So that's all about verifying. Before we go to the next slide, we are going to verify. Let's see the marks for this slide. So a mark for expanding, squaring and expanding, squaring and expanding, both outputs. Then we shall come and say that this is what we are given. For each value, I have to verify and see if it satisfies. When I use 4, put for here, put for here, put for here. You come up with that, which is true, because root 9 is 3, root 4 is 2, so 3 minus 2 is 1, which is here. So it is true. What about the second one? Put a negative here, here, and here. So we'll come up with that, which is not true. Because this minus this is 0. So it is false. Therefore, this does not satisfy, but this satisfies. So I have to conclude. So a mark for verifying and a mark for conclusion. Question 6 says the polynomial this has a remainder this when divided by this. Find the values of P and Q. Okay. So first of all, you need to identify the polynomial is this, we shall call it fx. Then the divisor is this, it has a symbol gx. So you need to factorize it, we shall see why. Then the remainder is this. Okay, after that, you need to quote a relationship for all these three. So the relationship is that Polynomial is equal to quotient times divisor plus remainder. So we shall come and combine all these three. So quotient, sorry, polynomial, put it there. Quotient, you don't know it. Divisor, you know it. And remainder, you know it. Okay. Now, because you don't know quotient, you should look for a way a value of x which will make the whole of this term equal to zero and to easily know that you come here and say if this is equal to zero it means x is equal to two so it means that the value of x which makes the whole of this term zero is two so putting x equal to two i'll come up with this so substitute where there is x you put there two where there is x you put there two the whole of this has become zero where this x put there two then you simplify to get equation one that will be our equation one 
Then also, you ask yourself, is there another value of x which makes the whole of this term 0? Of course there is, because when you equate this to 0, you are going to get x equal to 1. So let's also deal with that. When we put x equal to 1, what do we get? Before that, that will be the max for this slide. Then you can go to the next slide. So putting x equal to 1, you will come up with this expression. Simplify to get equation 2. So now we have two equations, equation 1 and equation 2. We need to solve them simultaneously. So when I subtract the 2, I'll come up with this. So this minus this is p. This goes away. This minus this is 1. So I've got the value of p. I can use equation 2 to get the value of 2. So substitute where there is p and get the value of 2. And I think that's what they wanted. And that's how the marks would be awarded. Then question 7. Question 7 is now in applied mathematics. I think you see it is from statistics. So it says that table below shows the heights in centimeters of children in a senior one of a certain school. This is it. So calculate the median height and the model height. So this is grouped data and grouped data is easily done by tabulation. So you have come and tabulate our work. We shall need the heights which are given in the question. Then the number of students will give us the frequency. So F means frequency. So you have put it there. Now they ask for median height. So median we need cumulative frequency and class boundaries. So cumulative frequency, this put it here. Then this plus this, this plus this, this plus this, this plus this, this plus this. So that's how they get cumulative frequency. Then class boundaries, you look at this here. Subtract the 2 and divide by 2. So subtract 154 minus 153, you get 1. Divide by 2, it's 0 0.5. Meaning... That to get the class boundaries, here upper class boundary will be got by adding 0 0.5 and lower class boundary will be got by subtracting 0 0.5. Like that. So let's do that. We shall come up with those as the class boundaries. Okay. Then we can now start answering the wanted median. When they ask for median, the first thing to do is to look for the median class so median class is a half n where n is the total frequency which is here so half n to get 22.5 now 22.5 some students but they think that median position is the median they want but that's not okay so for you to easily remember that's not that's not what they want we put th to help you remember that this is just a position which is not the end and after the position, you can now come and identify the median class because median is 22.5 from 2. It can't be in 2, it can't be in 16, but it is within 29. So I can now come and quote the formula. The formula is also available in the logbook. So LM is the lower class boundary of the median class. N over 2 is the position which you already got. CFB is the cumulative frequency before the median class and FNM is the frequency of the median class. Then C is the class width of the median class. So come here and subtract these two. 159.5 minus 156.5, you'll come up with 3, which is, will be your class width. The next is use the calculator bearing in mind that your calculator uses board mass. When you do that, you come up with the median they want. Roman 2, they wanted the model class. Model class is the class, okay, model height. Model height, you first get the class, model class, which is the class with the highest frequency. After identifying it, you get D1 and D2. 
So some use D, uh, for me I use delta, but everything is okay, the same. D1 or delta 1 is the difference between the modal frequency and the post modal frequency. But in L level, you need to be keen because there are two kinds of data. Data can have equal class width or unequal class width. They are treated differently. So in this case, the data had equal class to it, so that's why we are using frequency. Otherwise, we have used frequency density. Then D2 is the difference between this and that, which is 1. After getting D1 and D2, you can now code the formula and you substitute lower class boundary of the model class. D1 is here. D2 is here. C is 3. Then you can subtract the two, sorry, substitute using use the calculator to get the answer. So when the decimals are many, we round off to four. So basically that's what they wanted. Then question eight says three boys are pulling a heavy trolley by means of three ropes. The boy in the middle is exerting a pull of 100 newton. The other two boys, whose ropes both make an angle of 30 degrees with the center rope, are pulling with forces this and that. What is the resultant pull on the trolley and in what direction will it move? So the first thing to do, this is now under mechanics, forces. So you have to draw a force diagram. We shall come and put a trolley. Then you put the ropes now, begin with the center rope of 100 newtons. Put the rope on one side of making an angle of 30. The rope on the other side making an angle of 80. Now force diagrams are drawn with a ruler. Or remember that. So if I see that, that would be one mark. Now we are going to get the resultant. Resultant is about resolving. So shall resolve 40 newton force, 100 newton force, and 80 newton force to get this in vector form. But I want to mark into the direction. So get the magnitude of that vector, which is this, and also the direction. For direction, you need to make a, right, a sketch. Horizontal component is this. Vertical component is 30. Then the resultant is from start to end. And this will be the direction. So we already got the magnitude of this, but we don't know the direction. So direction shall use Sokatoa. Tan theta is equal to opposite over adjacent, which is that. Meaning that theta is 5.90. So we can now conclude that the resultant pull on the trolley is that in the direction 5.9 degrees to the center rope towards the 140 newton force. So resolving was one mark. Attempting to get the magnitude is one mark. Output is one mark. And the direction. So that was section A. 40 marks. Now we shall go to section B, which carries 48 marks. So question 9 part A says, prove that this is equal to this. I think let's begin with that. One shall remember that tan is equal to sine over cos. Then I use compound, angle of, compound angles to expand this to give you this and this to give you that. These identities are available in your logbook. But I want an expression in tan, meaning I have to divide both sides with cos. Remember, because co tan is sine over cos, something over cos. So divide throat each by cos A, cos B. You'll be able to get something. So, for example, here, this goes away, sine over cos is tan. Here, this goes away, sine over cos is tan. Here, this goes away, and this goes away. Here, this is tan, and this is also tan. And basically, that's what they wanted. 
Then for the hens part, let me see the hens part. They said, hens show that this is equal to this. So that is now more of comparison. Comparing this with this. I think you realize that I'm using an equivalent sign because I'm going to compare. So by comparison, you realize that this one, turn A is 1 and turn B is 5, turn B is equal to turn 15. Meaning that turn A equal to 1, act turn 1 is 45 and here B is 15. So when I do that, I'll come up with this being equal to turn A minus B, which is turn 45 minus 15, which gives you turn 30. And turn 30, remember 30 is a particular angle, so turn 30 is 1 over root 3. That was part A. What about part B? So before we go to part B, let's see the marks for this slide. So that had six marks. Let's go to part B now. Part B says, given that cos A is this, cos B is that, and where A and B are acute. Okay. Find the values of this and this. So remember that tan is sine over cos. So in the question we are given cos, so we need to also need to get sine. So sine a, this is Pythagoras theory, one, square root of 1 minus cos squared a. So substitute for cos squared a to give you this. Same applies to cos sine b, you will come up with this. These identities are available in your logbook. So sine a plus b, it gives you that. Then cos a plus b gives you that. Then from there you can now come and get tan a plus b from there, which is okay. Others can choose to use this, can choose to get to use the expansion that tan a plus b is equal to tan a plus tan b over 1 minus tan a tan b. It is still okay. You still get the same answer. Then Roman 2, cosec is the reciprocal of sine. So cosec a plus b is the same as 1 over sine a plus b. So reciprocal, the good thing we already have sine a plus b, so get the reciprocal, and that would be the answer they wanted. So that's how we could get the six marks on that part. Then question 10 says solve for x in the following. So this is indices, this is logarithm. Let's start with part A. Part A, we have that. We need to rearrange. So 9 is the same as 3 to power 2. But I want to explain in terms of 3 to power x. So 3 to power x to power 2 is the same as this. Then here it is 3 to power x times 3 to power 1. From there we shall let y be equal to 3 to power x and substitute to get a quadratic. Then we can solve the quadratic using quadratic formula. We shall get two values of y, but that's not all because the question was in, they want x. So when y is 5, what is x? So when y is 5, it means that 3 to power x is equal to 5. Therefore, x will be log 5 over log 3, which gives you that. Then when y is negative 2, it means that 3 to the power x is negative 2, means that x is undefined. And that's how the marks would be, 5 marks would be, sorry, 6 marks would be awarded. So now we shall go to part B, where they want us to solve this logarithm. So that's what was given. The first thing to do is to change 
to the same base. So change the same base. This remains cause to be 6 log base 4 of 4, which remains 6 over log base 4 of x. Or if not, you can just use the identity that to interchange this, you just get the reciprocal, whatever is okay. Then you shall come and let y be equal to log base 4 of x. Then substitute, cross multiply, multiply through by y, you'll get a quadratic. Then solve the quadratic using quadratic formula to get the two values of y. So for each value of y, we need to get the corresponding value of x. So you shall come and bring back the x, this, put there this, where there is y, put there this, from here. Then you eliminate the logarithm. This to power this is equal to this. And this to power this is equal to this. So when you do that, you shall come up with that. Then you shall get the two values of x. But because this x is a base, it cannot be a decimal. So you shall come and conclude that x cannot be that, therefore x is that. And that's what they want it. So a mark for changing variable, a mark for solving, a mark for both values of y, bring back the logarithm, both values of x, and conclusion. Question 11 is now statistics, but this time it is ungrouped data. They want you to get the mean, standard deviation, and also the 4th to 9th decile range. So here it, it is ungrouped data, but with frequencies. So we shall need to tabulate, get the values of x, then also get the frequency, then the total is 120. So the as for mean, mean we shall get, need to multiply f with x. So this with this, we shall move that, this two, this two, this two, this two, this two, this two. Then you add all this to get that. The wanted sun division, so we shall need fx squared. So fx squared is this with this, this with this, this with this, this with this this with this, this with this, this with this. Then you add all these ones. Then to measure frequency, because they ask for deciles, first bring this here, then this plus that, this plus this, this plus this, this plus this, this plus this, this plus this. Okay, so that is our complete table. Now we can answer the questions. One, they wanted the mean diameter, which is summation fx over f, summation of f, to give you 11. So a mark for this column, a mark for this column, a mark for this column substitution and output so the five marks for this part they also want a standard deviation so you come and get our standard deviation so code the formula substitute and get the output then the range fourth decile position is 4 over 10 n to give you this then you'll come here. Now for ungrouped data, we don't calculate, we only state. So you shall come here and look for where 48 lies in the CF column. So 48 lies here because 48 can't lie here, it can't lie here, it can't lie here, but it lies here. So the corresponding value of x is 11. That is why we said d4 is 11. Same applies to D9. We have 108 position, so come and look for the corresponding value of X. For that, it is here. 
so that it becomes our d9. Then the range means you subtract. When you subtract, you come up with that as our base sign. So this m1 was for this substitution, m1 was for the square root, and a1 was for the output. b1 for reading this value, reading this value, subtraction, output. Then question 12, it's under numerical methods. It says the table below gives the values of x and the corresponding values of fx. Okay. Using linear interpolation or extrapolation, use linear interpolation or extrapolation to find fx when x is 0 0.6. So linear interpolation involves extracting out values of interest. So when x is 0 0.6, you look for where 0 0.6 lies. It is between these. It is between these two values. So those are the ones you shall extract out. Let's do that. So we are come here and first extract out the values. Okay, then you can use quotients. So quotient we shall say this of these two this is smaller so whatever method you use as long as you are consistent so for me the one i prefer is this minus this over this minus that which is here this minus this over this minus that then call it, call, be consistent this minus this over this minus this which is here then you can use now a calculator and get that value so that means that f0.6 is 1.84. Then part B, let me see part B. Part B, they want the value of x when fx is 0 0.75. So where does 0 0.75 lie? 0 0.75, I think we realize that these values are decreasing order, meaning it is after that. So I will come here. and extract out the values of interest, which are the last two. And this time I'm going to use extrapolation because the value of interest is outside. Then still I'll use the method of these two. This is smaller, so I'm going to say this minus this over this minus that. Then also came here, this minus this over this minus this. When you do that, you shall come up with this simplify then use a calculator to come up with the answer they wanted okay so basically that's how the marks would be awarded for that part and part b then you shall go to part c part c says find the value of x for which fx is equal to x so fx equal to x means they have the same values. Both this and this have the same values. How do you know where it lies? Let's see. Do you see this one? It is increasing. And this one is reducing. So as this one increases and this one reduces, somewhere there will be, they have the same values. So it is still extrapolation. So you come and extract out values of interest. And then use correct quotients to equate them. Then you simplify, cross multiply, collect like terms and get the value of x. And that's what they wanted. So basically, that is how you could easily get 100 out of 
occur 100% in your end of term paper. So it is still possible to get 100% in math just as it was in O level if you are consistent and sensitive to what you want. So in A level math, we are interested majorly in the use of equal signs and two, chronological presentation of your solution. Chronological means orderly, be present your solution in order so that in a way that can be understood. Then three, communicate what you are doing. With that, you'll be able to get full marks in your principal mathematics. Otherwise, I wish you luck in your A-level journey. So that brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching and be reminded the next video will be for Still Senior 5, Math Paper 1 this time. So this time, I'm going to give you another stage from a different school. But this school at least covered, had some good coverage and the papers were split. So there's one alone and there are two alone. So if you're not subscribed, please click on the subscribe button below this video. So that just like I showed you at the beginning of this video when you we were searching. So click the subscribe button so that you can receive updates when the next video has been upload otherwise i wish you the best of luck in this end level